Hi, and welcome to Gaming with Easel JS, an advanced Canvas course on Tuts Plus. My name is Jason Green, and throughout this course I'll be showing you how we can use a JavaScript Canvas framework to build a HTML5 game. If you are new to Canvas, I suggest you check out my previous course on the subject, Canvas Essentials. For those of you who missed it or can't remember, here's a short recap of what we learnt. The focus of the course was to get a solid grounding in how Canvas works in HTML5. Canvas is a very low-level API. It has some basic drawing functionality, some filters and basic layering effects, but little else. Its power lies in giving us low-level access to the raw pixel data of the Canvas. With this level of control, there is very little that you can't do in Canvas. This means that we're able to do image manipulation and real-time video filters. We also discovered that once we draw something in Canvas, we lose all reference to it. The shapes are simply rendered as pixels on the canvas. In the Canvas Essentials lessons, we learnt how to set up object-oriented classes to manage our shapes, so that the shape instances could keep track of the shape's properties, and would also be responsible for rendering, updating and drawing the shapes into the canvas. Now that we know how canvas works under the hood, we don't want to be writing all of that boilerplate code every time. We'll be using a Canvas framework to take care of some of that for us, and just generally give us a more convenient API to work with. We'll still have to make our own decisions about how we structure and organize our code, but we won't have to be so concerned with some of this boilerplate stuff. So let's take a look at some of the frameworks that we can choose from. Now the first thing you're going to notice if you start looking into different Canvas frameworks is just how many there are, and how many different opinions there are on them. A quick look at Stack Overflow will show you that there's a lot of discussion going on, and a lot of it's also out of date as well. And there are quite a few articles out there as well. Through my research I've managed to narrow it down to a handful, so let's take a look at them. There is Kinetic.js. From what I've heard about this one, it seems to be quite fast, and a little lighter than some of the other frameworks. But will give you that level of abstraction that we're seeking between us and the native Canvas API. Paper.js definitely had one of the cooler websites that I'd seen. It seems to be very focused on delivering silky smooth vector animations and graphics, and has a pretty cool library of examples and tutorials. As you can see, Paper.js is also currently being used professionally in a number of commercial projects and other experiments. I must say I was definitely very tempted to choose this one. And then there's Easel.js, which comes as a part of the Create.js suite. Create.js is comprised of Easel.js, which manages Canvas interactions, Tween.js, which is a tweening library for JavaScript animation, Sound.js, which as you can probably guess, gives you a simple API for working with audio in HTML, and Preload.js, which will help you preload all of your assets before you run your code. Easel.js has a fair bit of documentation, community support, and has been in particular modeled around Flash Animation and Drawing API. On their site you'll also find a reference to various tools that they have for writing apps and games using Easel.js. You can generate code from vector shapes in real time by using this draw script, and there's a Sublime Text Code Completion tool as well. Now obviously when it comes down to choosing, my final consideration was the GitHub stats. Checking out Easel.js, you can see we have 330 watches, 3,500 stars, and 8 or 900 forks. You can see that Paper.js's stats are also pretty good. The stars are actually a little bit higher, and Kinetic is a little bit lower. They all seem to have fairly recent activity as well. So ultimately, in the end, you have to make a decision based on what feels right. And while I'd really love to explore Paper.js some more, for this course I've decided to go with Easel.js. The coding style should be familiar, there's a fair amount of resources and documentation and community support, and in the end I was won over by the options of using the other packages that make up the Create.js suite. And while the fact that it's based around the Flash API would not win me over alone, I think it's a generally good and solid direction, given that how long Flash was around for, and that it was particularly focused on animation and user interaction, it gives me confidence that the API will make sense and be easy to use. Finally, to give you a bit of an idea of what we're going to be covering in this course, I want to be straight up and say that I really want to jump into doing something practical as soon as possible. We'll spend a little bit of time to set up our project, to get familiar with the framework. I'd like to jump straight into the action by building some kind of 
tile-based puzzle game, and when we're done with that, we'll spend the most of the lessons building some kind of scrolling space shooting game. Well, that's all for our introduction. I hope you'll join me for the next lesson where we'll be setting up our development environment. Ciao!